on GoSuffolkRams.com. From Boston, Massachusetts, welcome to Suffolk Sounds, the official show for Suffolk University Athletics. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Suffolk Sounds podcast. This is episode 32, and today I'm joined with Suffolk women's cross country and track and field runner Gwen Coziera. Pronouncing that right, hopefully. Yeah. Um, so, Gwen, if you just want to introduce yourself to Ram Nation for those who may not know. Um, hi, I'm Gwen, and I'm an undecided business major, but I'm going to declare in global and cultural studies. I'm from Philadelphia, and this is my first semester in Boston. So, awesome. Yeah. Well, we're really excited to have you here in Boston. You've been such a great uh, like athlete for the track and field team and the cross country team so far. So just want to ask you some questions about your transition into college and how Suffolk has been treating you. Um, so my first question for you. So how has the transition from Philadelphia to Boston been so far? And have you developed any rivalries with any teammates or classmates due to your sports affiliations? So I've not developed any rivalries for sports. I am a Flyers fan, but luckily nobody has hated me for that. Yeah. And um, other than that, Boston has been great. The transit system is a lot better than it is in Philadelphia. That's good. Um, and I'm really enjoying myself here. Awesome. Um, so first and foremost, so getting into your cross-country career, um, what got you started in cross-country? Was it a parent, a sibling, um, or did it just kind of start in middle school or high school? And when did you ultimately decide that you wanted to compete in cross country collegiately? So growing up, I played a lot of sports and in middle school, we had students run Philly style, which is a nonprofit organization where you can run about three times a week and then they let you race for free in 5Ks across the city. And ultimately you train for the Broad Street run, which is a 10 mile run down Broad Street, which is in the middle of Philadelphia. And so I started there running and then in high school, I ran a couple seasons, mainly because I played ice hockey competitively, but um, I was concussed from that, and they needed a different sport that had no head impact or nothing where I could get hurt, so I decided to run. And then I would say end of junior year in high school, I decided that I wanted to run in college instead of playing ice hockey. So, yeah, and I really enjoyed running. So Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say I enjoy running too much, but I can see where people enjoy it, um, especially if they're good at it. So um, I just want to know. So you played ice hockey in college, in high school. Um, what ultimately made you decide that you wanted to stick to cross country and cross country only? So freshman year of high school, I got a concussion that was like pretty bad. And my doctor didn't want me to play ice hockey more, but I wanted to play because it's a great sport. It's a lot of fun. So that's when I started running more competitively, like more often and started really racing. Um, and then I would say it's like end of junior year. I really was thinking about playing ice hockey in college. And then I got an injury from running. And when I took time off from running, I realized how much it meant to me and how much I really enjoyed it. So by the start of senior year, I was still pretty injured, but I decided that I wanted to run competitively and I started reaching out to coaches and trying to get recruited for running. Yeah, so that leads me into my next question. So what was that recruiting process like for you? Um, were other schools interested and what ultimately led you to choose Suffolk? So Suffolk I found through their women's hockey program actually, oh, wow. right Originally, like I said, I was trying to get recruited for ice hockey. So right when I was finding their women's hockey program, I also realized that I wanted to run. So I reached out to Coach Feldman, and luckily he replied. And um, when I called him, he was pretty convincing about coming to the school. And when he was going through my times and stuff, he was um, saying times that I that he thought I could be able to run where I like hadn't heard those yet. He was telling me how and he put a lot more thought into it than a lot of other coaches who were kind of just like, oh yeah, if you come here, you'll run fast. And I was like, well, I would hope for that. So he definitely looked into it and does his research. And that was really nice. And also his training plan and his schedule of running in the morning, I really liked. And then of course, when I came to visit here, I really liked the school. So yeah. I mean, yeah, I've heard a lot of great things about coach Will and how well he's recruited and built the program up. Um, you know, he's an alumni himself, so he takes a lot of pride in it. 
And obviously it's been paying off recently with all the success you've had and the team. Um, and so you've already had a lot of success here. Um, and what were your expectations like coming into your freshman season and did it go as well or better than you thought it would? It definitely went a lot better than I thought it would. Um, I have to say that was definitely Coach Will's fault. Like I was not expecting to be, I was hoping to break 20 in the 5K and I did, but now we're looking to break 19 in the 5K and I was just not expecting to do that at all my freshman year of college. And um, being able to be on like all CCC, not expecting that, but his coaching has really helped me be able to do that. So yeah, and also I guess for, Indoor and outdoor track, we run a little bit different distances than we did in high school, but hoping to kind of run the equivalent of those, but faster. So like the, we run a 3K here and in high school it was a 3,200. So hoping to run faster than what it was there. <laughs> that makes sense. Sure. I mean, yeah, I'm not too familiar with the track and field, or <laughs> uh, yeah. no, but I'm sure you'll be fast. Um, so speaking of your success, you've been named CCC Rookie of the Week three times, named to the All-CC team, of course, and you came in fourth place overall at the CCC Championships. Um, and I know Will's been a big advocate for that. And But what other factors have gone and in, like played into your success so far? Um, I think really the team has. We have a great team this year. It's very supportive. And it's also having a training partner, Sydney, um, I, in high school, did not have people that I was running with during practice and being able to run during track workouts, which are very mentally challenging, I would say, is a lot better than running alone. Mm -hmm. So just having someone there to run with and pace with. And also, when you're able to hit the times, it gives you a real boost of confidence going into the race. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and so you mentioned it, that the team's been very successful this year. You guys are coming off of a CCC championship in your just your first year in the conference, which is really cool. Um, how did that feel for you personally? And how is the team feeling after that? We're pretty excited. I'm really proud of the team this year. I don't think we expected to be top 10 in the region. And I think since we're such a young team, this is really motivating going forward. Um, I think within the next couple of years, we could definitely be competitive for nationals. So and everybody is very excited about racing at regionals and then these next coming seasons for cross country. Mm. Yeah, I'm really excited for the future of this team. You know, I'll be here next year, so I'll definitely be cheering you guys on from the sideline and hopefully putting out more content for you guys. Um, and so obviously D D3 regionals are coming up. Um, what are your expectations for it and how excited are you to be hosting it in Boston at Franklin Park? Um, I'm very excited to host it, mainly because we've raced it twice, so I know what to look for when I'm racing it, and I feel like it gives us an advantage on the course. We've also practiced there a couple times, and we know the turns, and there's a couple turns where if you don't take it right, you're definitely going to lose a couple seconds, and in a race like this, a couple seconds can drop you a couple places, and you could get ranked like 10th versus 12th, and you know, you don't want to do that, obviously. So it's very exciting being able to race at your home course and also having the track team come up and um, hopefully the atmosphere will be really good because of that. Yeah. So I was just wondering personally, like what is the competition like at the D3 regionals and how is it different than like the races you run um, during the season? So I wouldn't know what it's like at D3 regionals because I haven't ran that yet, but from what I've heard, um, there's definitely a lot of girls who are really fast, obviously, because it's the regional championship and they're trying to qualify for nationals. So there's a lot of pressure on some of these girls to run pretty fast here. Um, but that's very exciting because we have a lot of very competitive people. Yeah. And um, hopefully it'll be a fast race because of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. And so going away from cross country a little bit. So you've been living in Boston now for a couple months. Um, what have been your favorite parts of the Boston so far and what makes it better than Philly? So I wouldn't necessarily say that it's better than Philly, at least okay. not yet, but <laughs> um, I really do enjoy running here a lot more than in Philly. There's a lot more trails and places to run. Um, also, 
the north end is great. Uh, I've ate there a couple times. And also there's like Boba's and Mike's Pastries, which are very enjoyable places. <laughs> um, and other than that, it's just a really pretty city. And the layout is amazing. It's a tad bit confusing. Philly's on a grid. Here, mm -hmm. it's more of a European layout. Yep. So I've definitely gotten lost a couple times. Yeah. But still, very pretty city. Very nice. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this is my first semester in the city as well. So I can tell you, it's been a learning curve for me. I mean, I'm from New Hampshire, so it's not too far from me, but it's definitely different than just normal back roads, which is everything in New Hampshire. So, um, mm -hmm. and then, so doing research on you before this, I realized that you went to Lower Marion High School, the same as Kobe Bryant. Um, and so I'm sure there was a lot of talk about him when you were in high school there. And I'm sure people have asked you questions about it in the past, but what was it like going to the same high school as him? Um, so I transferred there in my junior year. And when I arrived, I didn't know that he had gone there. So walking in, I really thought that they just were really big fans of Kobe Bryant. They had a whole gym dedicated to him, a whole hallway. And I was like, why is this school absolutely <laughs> crazy about Kobe Bryant? And then someone told me and yeah. I realized, but um, seeing all the, he has, there's like a Lakers jersey in there and there's also his Lower Marion jersey and all the autographs and pictures. Um, and it's a lot of fun to see all this stuff up as well as our basketball team is pretty competitive. So during the games that would be packed in there. Mm -hmm. And also people would come just cause they're like, oh, this is Kobe Bryant's team. Not cause it was our basketball team. But yeah. It still got packed and it was still fun being in the stands for those games. Yeah, that is a really unique experience. Um, all right. And I think that's all the questions I have for you today. Um, we really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Um, and I just want to remind Ram Nation to stay tuned for the D3 East Regionals at Franklin Park on Saturday, November 13th to see Gwen and the rest of the team running. Um, the men will also be out there running and hopefully um, competing for a spot in nationals. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This has been Suffolk Sounds. Don't forget to subscribe, like, rate, and review however you listen to your podcast.